I'm going to start this video with two assertions. Assertion number one, any Excel data analyst that wants to differentiate themselves in the job market needs to acquire predictive analytics skills. Assertion number two, acquiring those predictive analytics skills is probably far easier than you might think. This video is a short guide for any Excel data analyst to start the journey of acquiring predictive analytics skills that can be used in a broad range of business scenarios and only requires basic Excel skills. Just in case you're wondering, I wanna be crystal clear on this point. To use the techniques I'll be talking about in this guide, you do not need advanced math skills, you don't need to write super complicated formulas, and you don't need to write any VBA code. The tools and techniques that I will be covering in this guide are accessible to any motivated Excel data analyst, regardless of role and background. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip over to PowerPoint and we're gonna talk about the first idea that we need, which is what are the two families, the two general types of predictive analytics that we can implement using trusty old Excel. So the first thing that you need to know when you get started with predictive analytics is that there are two general types or two general families of predictive analytics techniques. The first of which is called regression. And regression is pretty simple. Essentially, it is a predictive model, a predictive analytics technique, where the thing that you're trying to predict is a number. It's a measurement. So think of anything with a decimal point in it. Height, weight, sales, you name it. Anything that you can measure in the business world, that is a regression predictive analytics problem. And not surprisingly, there are many, many scenarios where regression is useful. For example, revenue forecasting. That revenue has a decimal point in it. This is a regression problem. Marketing mix. So how much should we spend on digital advertising versus television versus radio advertising? Marketing mix. Also decimal points, right? Money has a decimal point in it. Regression problem. Price and cost modeling. Customer lifetime value. Regression is wildly useful. And arguably, regression techniques are some of the most common, if not the most common, predictive analytics techniques in use. And that includes, by the way, not just in the business world, but also in the realm of science. Now, in the business world, you actually see that regression is useful. Don't get me wrong, it's absolutely useful. However, what you tend to see is the next family has more prominence than you see in science, and that is classification. Classification is a predictive analytics technique where instead of trying to predict a number, what you're trying to do is predict a label. So for example, male or female as a label, bronze, silver, or gold as a label. Another way to think about this is, is that classification is all about predicting a state, your state of being, are you male or female? The state of your Olympic medal, bronze, silver, or gold, as opposed to predicting a measurement, as opposed to predicting a number like you do in regression. Now in the science world, classification isn't nearly as prominent as in the business world because as you might imagine, the number of scenarios where you're trying to predict a state in business analytics is extremely common. Some scenarios where this is typically done is for example, fraud detection. Let's say you work for a credit card company. What is the predicted state of this authorization? Is it good? Is it a legitimate transaction or is it fraudulent? Churn prevention. We're trying to figure out the future state, predict the future state of a customer. Are they going to leave our company for somebody else? That's known as churn. Conversion modeling. Is somebody coming to our website, what is our prediction for their future state? Are they going to be a customer? Are they going to spend money with us? Or are they going to abandon their shopping cart on our website? And lastly, warranty claims as well. Often these are a fraud scenario. Is this a legitimate warranty claim or not? That sort of thing. So not surprising, classification is super, super useful. These are the two general families of predictive analytics, regression and classification. And in the next slide, I will be covering techniques for both regression and classification that you can use inside of Excel. And once again, like I said previously, but it bears repeating, the techniques that I'll be talking about are very easily implemented. Now, there's a couple things I should mention before I move on to the next slide. And they are, one, time series forecasting is out of scope. And if you don't know what time series forecasting is, don't worry about it, because obviously it doesn't matter. However, if you're familiar with time series forecasting, that is a very specialized form of regression, and it's not covered in this particular video. However, you can do time series forecasting in Excel using out-of-the-box functionality. If you're interested in having me maybe create a video about that, just let me know in the comments below the video. And next up, I'm gonna be a little heretical with this two-family framework here of regression 
and classification. I'm going to talk about two techniques that I would argue are in the regression family. Well, actually, I'm going to talk about one technique that's in the regression family and then one technique that's in the classification family. And some people might disagree with me on that. And that's totally cool. This is my video, so I'm going to be a bit heretical. So I'm going to talk about five techniques in this video, two techniques in regression, three techniques in classification. And to kind of put these in some sort of context for you as you begin your predictive analytics journey, I'm going to use a scale. I'm going to use a spectrum of quote unquote easy and quote unquote difficult. And just so you know, this is not a hard and fast spectrum. It's very qualitative and it's just something I made up for the purposes of this video so that you get some sort of sense of the five techniques, which ones are the most easy to use, generally speaking, and which are more difficult to use. So the things to consider along the spectrum of easy to difficult are three items that you want. You want to keep these in mind. So first up is the implementation in Excel. As I've said, everything in here can be implemented using like tables of data, common functions, and out of the box Excel functionality. So overall, all of the implementations for these five techniques in Excel are easy. However, some are a little bit more involved than others, and I will talk about that. Next up is the conceptual requirements for you. Now, as I said, you're not going to need to learn any complicated math. You're not going to need to learn any coding to do these things. However, to use the techniques effectively, you have to learn them. And some of the techniques have more things to learn than others. Any professional can do it because I've taught all of these techniques to people before. Anybody can do it. And then lastly, and maybe most importantly, is this idea that if you use a predictive analytics technique and you find something interesting in the business and you want to communicate it to decision makers, what are the conceptual requirements on them, the decision makers, to understand what you have done? That's also another thing to consider. And in fact, arguably, it might be the most important thing to consider overall. So all three of these things are going to be wrapped up together along this spectrum as I talk about each individual technique. So first up, let's talk about regression. And this is where I'm getting a bit heretical with the framework here because I'm putting process behavior charts in the regression bucket and a lot of people might disagree with me on that and that's okay. So, but let me explain to you what these things are. These are very powerful graphical techniques for looking at numeric data over time, for example, maybe your sales figures or call volume in your call center. And then it allows you to create predictions based on the historical data in a very specific kind of way. And, and let me give you an example. Let's say that you're, you create a process behavior chart around inbound calls to your customer service center. And let's say you've got 12 weeks of data and each week is essentially one data point, which is the total volume of calls coming in each week. The chart would allow you to create, based on the historical data, an estimate of the range of values for calls that you would see roughly 80% of the time. And that would give you a range. And let's say on average over the 12 weeks, you got 1,000 calls a week. And the process behavior chart tells you 80% of the time, you're going to get between 900 and 1,100 calls per week. Since that is a prediction that is also a number, that's why it's in the regression camp. Now, the reason why this thing is so cool is that it is super, super easy to implement in Excel. No fancy calculations really at all. You get a chart as the end result, and then you interpret the chart. The conceptual requirements on you to use process behavior charts is exceedingly simple. It is so, so easy to use these charts. And not surprisingly as well, using the charts to communicate with your decision makers is also extremely easy. This is one of my favorite favorite predictive analytics and business analytics techniques, bar none. Next up, the second technique that we're going to talk about in the regression space is linear regression. This right here, if you're not familiar, is probably the single most used predictive analytics technique in the world, bar none. That includes both the business world and the science world. So linear regression can be done in Excel using the analysis tool pack add-in. And it provides you a user interface that allows you to click things around and set everything up and it runs the linear regression for you. So that part is easy. The reason why linear regression is sitting right here in this qualitative spectrum is because it is more difficult for you to use as a data analyst. 
And it's also more difficult to communicate the findings to your business stakeholders as compared to process behavior charts. Now, once again, you don't need to know any complicated math. Excel does all the math for you. However, you have to learn how to interpret the models and you need to learn how to evaluate whether the models are legitimate. And then once you've done those two things, you then have to then communicate properly the findings of the model to the decision makers. And those are all more complex, more complicated than process behavior charts. Now the upside is linear regression is also arguably more powerful than process behavior charts because if no other reason, process behavior charts only work with a single type of data, for example, your calls coming into your call center, whereas linear regression can work with multiple pieces of data at the same time. So here are two very powerful predictive analytics techniques. These are awesome techniques, easily implemented in Excel, and any professional can do it. Sorry to interrupt the slideshow. I know you're probably really disappointed about that, but I did want to mention that if you're interested in learning more about the techniques that I'm talking about in this video, check out the description below the video. There'll be links to other YouTube videos where you can learn more about these techniques. Also, if you're liking the content, if you think it's useful, if you wouldn't mind helping me out with the YouTube algorithm and just smash that like button, that would be awesome. That just tells the YouTube algorithm that this is good content and that other professionals like yourself might benefit from watching the video. Let's go ahead and get back to the slideshow and talk about classification. As promised, there are three techniques that I'm gonna talk about in the classification space. And the first one is market basket analysis, also known as association rule mining. This is wickedly powerful stuff. Now, once again, this is a bit heretical. There would be many folks who would argue that market basket analysis is not a classification technique, doesn't matter. Let me tell you what you can do with market basket analysis. Market basket analysis allows you to take a table of data and you can take one of the columns on your table of data and you can tell market basket analysis, hey, I want you to determine everything else using all the other columns of data. Which combinations of these columns of data over here are highly associated with this thing that I'm holding steady over here, what I'm holding between these two fingers, right? So for example, let's say that you work in the grocery store industry and you're highly interested in knowing what other products in the grocery store when purchased are highly associated with mayonnaise. Let's say, <laughs> I'm just totally making this up, right? Mayonnaise. So not surprisingly, it'd probably be things like bread and cheese and mustard and all the things in the United States that we use to make sandwiches because mayonnaise is a very common thing we put on sandwiches. But notice that it doesn't have to be a grocery store product. This could be whether or not a customer is going to convert to paying, yes or no. It could be whether or not a particular feature in a software product is going to be used, yes or no. So you'll notice that that becomes a state prediction, a label prediction exercise. So market basket analysis is awesome. The great news is that it is really super simple to implement in Excel using the solver, which is an add-in in Excel. That So the implementation is quite easy. The conceptual requirements for you as the data analyst are also quite easy. And most importantly, once again, the findings that come out of market basket analysis are wildly easy for decision makers to figure out, to understand. And let me give you an example. So let's say that you use market basket analysis and the thing that you are holding over here, the thing that you're trying to predict, let's say you're in the HR space, is whether or not an employee is going to quit. And then what you do is you use all the other columns of data and say, which of these behaviors of employees are most highly associated with an employee quitting? And what you get back is a metric called lift. And what it tells you is how many more times likely is this particular employee to quit based on the other characteristics. So let's say, for example, 2.3 times more likely to quit. Think about that for a second. How easy is that for anybody to understand? If employee XYZ has these three characteristics over here, they're 2.3 times more likely to quit than somebody else. Super, super easy. This is powerful stuff. I use market basket analysis all the time. And I know how to use more sophisticated predictive analytics techniques. However, I tend to use market basket analysis mainly because one, it's super easy, it's very effective, and I can communicate findings to stakeholders very, very easily. Next up is something called naive bays. And I don't expect you to understand or know what naive bays is, don't worry about it. This is something that will resonate with you, I'm pretty sure. Naive bays is a classic classification technique for implementing spam filters. 
right? So an email comes into your Hotmail or your Yahoo or your Gmail account, whatever it might be, and automatically gets sent to your junk folder or your spam folder. That is usually some form of naive Bayes or maybe something a little bit more sophisticated, but in the old days, they were definitely based on this naive Bayes classification technique. So there's another way to predict state, yes or no. Is this piece of email ham, quality email, good stuff, legitimate email, or spam, stuff I don't want in my inbox? So naive Bayes is also very easily implemented, not as easily implemented as market basket analysis, so it's a little bit more difficult. It requires a little bit more knowledge on your part to use it correctly, and then communicating the findings is also a little bit more complicated to stakeholders. However, you'll notice that conceptually in this framework here of difficulty, it is still easier than linear regression. And then lastly, we have another super, super common predictive analytics technique, which is known as logistic regression. Notice they both have regression here. However, the thing to remember is that logistic regression is designed to predict yes, no, states, positive, negative, fraud, legit, legit fraud, <laughs> excuse me. A statistician might argue with me and say, Dave, logistic regression isn't a classification technique, but it's okay for our purposes. This allows you to predict states. Now, out of all five of these, this one is the most difficult because you have to implement logistic regression yourself using the solver. For whatever reason, Microsoft has decided not to put logistic regression in the analysis tool pack, unlike logistic or linear regression, which is in the analysis tool pack. So you have to implement it yourself. It's not super difficult, but it is most the most difficult thing out of all of these five to implement out with using out of the box Excel. It also has the most difficult conceptual requirements on you because of the way the model works and because you also have to implement the things yourself, the calculations yourself. And then lastly, Interpreting a logistic regression model for business stakeholders is the most difficult of these five techniques. And I won't go into the reasons why, That's they're a little bit mathy, it doesn't really matter for this video. However, all five of these are eminently approachable to any motivated Excel data analyst. Just maybe start with these two up here and then move down as you need. Process behavior charts gets, gets what you need done, great, use that. If market basket analysis gets what you need done, great. And then maybe you move to linear regression if you need something a little bit more powerful than process behavior charts. And it might be that you don't need anything more powerful than market basket analysis in the classification space. So if you're still watching the video right now, I'm assuming that you're interested in learning more about how you can apply predictive analytics in your work using Excel. So I'll put up a couple of my tutorial videos right here and here, and you can learn how easy it is to implement predictive analytics in Excel and up your data analysis game. That's it for this video. Until next time, please stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.